I met Pip on uh, December the 4th, 1968, at about four o'clock in the afternoon. She came to my, my packing shed as a guest of my boss who had a party for the weekend. It was in the 60s, 68, there was a little bit of rebellion. I went to South Africa because I knew, I knew nobody there and more importantly, I knew my parents knew nobody there. I was born in South Africa, grew up in South Africa, uh, met Harry in South Africa, got married in South Africa, came to England in 1972. I was just homesick. Um, and I just wanted to plant a vineyard. I didn't want to plant a huge vineyard, I just wanted to look at some vines, you know, and just sort of um, feel a bit more like, oh, I've got something Mediterranean close by, and I can just feel, ah, oh, imagine I'm in South Africa. And 34 years later, we planted our vineyard in 2006. Bigger, much bigger than I even imagined, 16 acres. I, I was thinking of just a little tiny little patch of vines I could just go, ooh, ah, oh, and look after myself probably as well, you know. Sir Charles Matthew Goring from Haydn married uh, Miss Fagg, who is the heiress of Wisson in 1743, and that brought Wisson House into the, into the family. After the war in 1950, the Foreign Office took it over in the form of Wilton Park, where they hold, and they still hold, international discussions there, discussing all manner of things that are relative to all countries. Remarkably, this uh, fairly old plasterwork, which people find interesting, is made up of bunches of grapes. We incorporated that into the label of the bottle. Dermot was born in Ireland, grew up in Ireland. He said, right, I want to come and be a winemaker. And he had, I think, an uncle who was a monk. Monk? Was he a monk? Um, an archdeacon. Uncle, an archdeacon. And he made wine. So Dermot, aged about 12, watched him and he was fascinated by this whole process of how you made this wine. There's no, there's no shortage of passion or risk in our <laughs> winemaking business. <don't> <laughs> so, so that's Dermot's a perfect, perfect pair. So when he then um, looked at the turkey factory and said that would be the most amazing um, winery, uh, we were like, whoa. But he had it all worked out in his head. You know, it just, this would do this, this would do that, 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 that. Now we need a wine press. Okay, Dermot, so he gave us a number, a figure. He said, Dermot, don't even go there. You just said, you know, you've got to go back to France and source something. Um, so he, go, he went off to France and he, um, having worked in with Chatelier, met all his friends, chatted to them all, went round here, there and everywhere. And they said, um, okay, cocktail press. French, made by in Champagne. They were the original presses that were made actually in the 60s. Um, and he found one. And so it's reconditioned, he, he got it over. The base is an original, oh no, it's, it's a reconditioned steel base, two and a half tons of steel. Um, and the, the, the old cock bit, the basket, is old French oak, beautiful, beautiful, with these lids that come down. Our wine, basically, our sparkling wine is taking us to places we'd never have dreamed of, far better than a turkey factory. <laughs> so it's been amazing, it's been a real adventure.